Broke and play. Ooh. Man, we got the none other. Hey, I had to bring him in. I've been, I've been asking, could he come? For about eight weeks now. <laughs> oh, man. The, the nigga done gave me every excuse in the book. <laughs> we finally got Reggie Ball in the yeah. motherfucking bed. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I kept telling him. I said, bro, you going to come forward with Broken Blade? He be like, ah, I'm going to see y'all. I'm going to be busy. Right by his car right in front of the gym. I said, man, why the nigga don't want to come? Man, Reggie. What's up? Before we get into anything, bro, mm -hmm. I done argued with these motherfuckers. <laughs> The last five weeks or so. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I already know what you're about to say. These <laughs> motherfuckers act like Calvin Johnson wasn't like that. You played with him at Georgia Tech. Oh, you was QB1. You was QB1. We didn't say that. You was QB1. We didn't say he you was QB1. Like that. You saw him before the world saw him. I'm going to take this jacket did. off. Absolutely yeah. did. Hey, man. I'm biased. Right. I mean, it's going to oh, come off biased. But, but no, no, no. Don't you ain't gotta include none of that. <laughs> but look, man, you you ain't you never seen anybody be double on the line of scrimmage, uh, uh, like gunners are in, in punt return formations ever before. Yeah. I haven't. That's real. And I haven't seen any footage of anybody getting doubled on the line or triple teamed, uh, literally like uh, during an NFL game. You could probably see that in part by they trying to take out the best player or something like that. But we talking about this man is is a first round draft pick playing against some of the best of the best, and they're putting two defensive players that are getting paid millions of dollars to try to stop him, and they still couldn't do it. Now I heard the argument about Randy Moss. I heard <laughs> everybody else, but there's never been a time in history in, in the history of football have you seen this? He's catching the ball over three, four players at a time. You saw what he did in that first round game against uh, Dallas when they got robbed. Yeah. Literally got robbed against Dallas. And again, there's no other option on the field. There is no other option on the field. You stop 81, you win the game. Granted, my boy didn't win a lot of games up there, or we didn't win a lot of games up there, but he still made his impact. And I don't know anybody else that's gotten as close to 2,000 yards receiving in the season and still being the only option on the field. That is paramount when you talk about the argument of who's the best wide receiver in the game. Don't give me stats. Don't give me tenure. Don't give me how long somebody has played. Give me the impact on the game. Calvin demanded every eye on the field to be on him every time he was on the field, bro. So that's why I give him that nod. So you got Calvin over Randy Moss? Absolutely. Thank you. That is the debate. <laughs> Because they don't want to believe me because they look at you. Reggie was an athlete. Reggie went to the NFL. Now, what you going to tell him, Marcel? You got every day to say, I don't know football. I ain't play football. You didn't play football. He did. I played football, bro. You even went to the NFL. I didn't go to the NFL. <laughs> my, my, Madden, that was nice and Madden, too. <laughs> That's, that counts. That Man, counts. that also counts. Reggie you said can't, two can't men had to check him on the line. Yeah, that, that's... Oh, no. I, He's right about that. I've never seen that since uh, Calvin. That was that was. Crazy. And it's in the NFL now. Yeah. This is the highest of the high, the best of the best, and they're still putting two guys on him at a time. There, you didn't have to worry about anybody else on the field other than and, him. And he retired in his prime. They keep leaving that off. Absolutely. Only nine years, maybe eight, eight, nine years. <sighs> they keep leaving I still, that I still off. Got, I still got Randy though. Respectfully, I still got Randy. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> but you know why, man? <laughs> All right, I just had to, I just had to end that, Reggie. We're right, gonna yeah. get. So, Reggie, you went to Georgia Tech. Yes, sir. So, is the Georgia Tech versus Georgia rivalry still, like, intact? Like, you don't root for the Bulldogs at all? Even though, like, because you from Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. I'm from the metro area of Atlanta, the east side of things. East side. Like, Stone Mountain. Stone Mountain things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right outside of Atlanta. So, don't be playing me when you say I'm not really from Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> but everything I do now is inside the city limits. So, you right. know what I mean? Give me my honorary badge. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's still real, man. Um, I still don't like the color red. The only time yeah. I wear it is on Sunday for the Falcons. For real? Uh, yeah. Um, I was unfortunately, you know what I mean. I never got a victory against them, but I mean, you got to give, you got to tip your cap to them, bro. Them, they got a good program, dog. Okay, okay. program. Five star recruits every year, top ten recruiting class every year. Um, they were well overdue for a national championship. I hate uh -huh. to see them to get two, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you could have you you dealt with one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you, you, mean, you got to tip the cap. So, they like, do you look at with them winning championship as you being, you know, a Georgia Tech alumni, starting quarterback, do you, like, seeing them win the championship, do you feel like that's good for the state or you take all that out of the element? I don't give a damn about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> my team is downtown. Straight you know up. I mean? so, Tech. Yeah. Speaking of Tech, did you see when they beat Miami? I loved it. That was crazy. Man. I loved it. I had Tech with the points, but I didn't think, I didn't know they were going to win. I'm they not, flat out won. Hey, I'm not a betting man, but I'm a guessing man. And I correctly guessed on that money line of, of us winning that game when we were down by 10. I should have texted you then. Like, hey, man. <laughs> a live pick. I'm sure. not a betting man. I'm a guessing man. That is a strike. I think we talked about that when you came in. Man. Uh, <laughs> week, but yeah. Yo, 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 yo. You know what time it is. Time for Broken Play. And you know what we rocking with. Prize picks. Look, man. Anything you put up to $100, they going to match it. And it's the best time to be on prize picks when you're using the code broken play. Listen, you got baseball season in. You got WNBA. You got college football. You got NFL. Tennis. It's so many things that you... Okay, you don't like basketball. Okay, you like football. Any sport that you into, you can type it in. Come on, man. It's easy money. All you're doing is more or less. Who you like? If you like some of your favorite players and you think they're going to get more... Pick more. If you think they're going to do less, pick less. Man, up to six picks, you can win up to 25 times your money. Over here at Broken Play, we've been winning money. We've been popping 1942. We've been having Fiji water. We've been having hot weed and platters. And you know why? Because we on prize picks. You could be on there, too, if you use the Broken Play code. And it's going to match up the money. If you put up $100, they match your $100. Now you got two. Look, I ain't no math teacher. I ain't, I ain't do too good in algebra. But I know that's a good that's a good math right there. Hey, come on over there to Broken Play. Prize picks. Get at them. <laughs> Impressive win. Lucky win. But again, that's a W for the good guys. For sure. For sure. So look, when you was at Georgia Tech, because it was like mostly like... Um, it was like run option offense when when no. they call it. No, that's, that's, that's after him. That's yeah, everybody get that mixed up. Right. They yeah. look at my stats, you see I'm a little shorter than the average guy, but nah. You had a pro style? Pro style yeah. offense with oh, Chan Gailey. Okay. Chan Gailey. Chan uh, Gailey was there. Head coach for uh, uh, Pittsburgh, OC for Dallas, OC for Buffalo and Miami. So nah, it, it was no read option, no zone option, nothing like that. It was five and hitch, quick five, five step mm -hmm. drop. You ran a lot though, didn't you, Reggie? Yeah. I mean, uh, I had to at times. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm, around my junior senior year, they started kind of, what you seeing now happened like my junior year with uh, uh, more um, a dual threat quarterbacks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's now it's more accepted. It's, man, it's, it's day and night from what it was when mm -hmm. I was playing. I was like, I was frowned upon. Yeah, no, nah, guys like me were frowned upon. Yeah. Hurry up and go play wide receiver. Hurry up and get that running back. Hurry up and go play DB. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, but now, I mean, you got D lineman running four three four four. You got to put somebody back there that can move. Right. That's a fact. That's what a fact. what quarterbacks you liking right now? Quarterbacks I'm liking right now. Um, we just spoke on them a little bit. I I, I love Aaron Rodgers. I, I I do really love Aaron Rodgers. Uh, uh, unpopular opinion, but that Purdy dude in San Francisco, I love the way he executes. Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, ironically, they just laid an egg right, up there in Cleveland just now, but I love him. I love the way he executes and he uses his tools. He just does his job. Mm -hmm. uh, Jalen Hurts, um, I think my boy down in Houston, man, I, I think he... He's that next one for us, though. CJ Stroud. I think he's that next one, though. I, I, I like him a lot. Reggie, I don't know, man. It just we we, I like CJ, we just think alike, man. And that's why they see that part. You like CJ Stroud? Bro, I love it. I ain't peeped that episode. I missed no. that one. I usually keep up. Keep hey, up. no, we I, we said it earlier in the other episode, but no, man, it's like that's what I think I've been missing around here. <laughs> Somebody who on that higher level of sports oh, thinking just like me. Because <laughs> I be feeling so trapped hard in this motherfucker all day. Hey, man. He come here, and I sat down 10 minutes, and I said everything he was supposed to say. We ain't rehearsed or nothing. Hey, this shit ain't rehearsed. I, I, no, no. So that's dope. Great minds thinking like, you know you're doing good things when you get opposition, man. Keep going. Yeah, Keep man, going. but they, I don't know. I think they do this shit on purpose sometimes. <laughs> they do this shit on purpose. Hey, so man, when I'm... you was like, you was at, uh, come from Stevenson, right? Mm -hmm. So when you was come from Stevenson, what other colleges uh, were, were on your radar? Uh, Auburn. 
I was one call away from going to, committing to Auburn. Wow. Um, and I, I, I rubbed it in their face real big, too, because we actually beat them twice. Mm. I was waiting on Terry Price, the recruiter, to call me one more time, and I was going to commit to Auburn. Damn. Um, they didn't. So after that last game I, um, I played, got on the phone with Tech, went to them. Georgia loved me, wanted me to play uh, any type of athlete position, though. But not quarterback. Saban loved me. Saban loved me. He was at LSU then? Yes, he was at LSU with Jimbo Fisher. Uh -huh. But he told me straight up, hey, we got Jamarcus Russell coming in, 6'4". He's going to be that guy. You can play anywhere else. Well, college he was. Listen, he's NFL. Honest. Yeah, yeah, you can play Saban, anywhere Saban else. But uh, Michigan loved me at DB. Louisville. I had some, I had some, you know, some decent looks. But uh -huh. I mean, you wanted I, I to, play I wanted to be that guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, want to be quarterback. Started mm -hmm. as a true freshman, like that's right away. It's hard to, yeah, that's hard to say sometimes. So quarterback position. So did a little something, real. man. Yeah. Look back on it, you know, it's pretty big things, but did a little something. Yeah, for sure. You you wasn't no slouch. Uh -huh. That's why I'm saying at the time when when running quarter when you would watch a quarterback who would scramble and run you. Growing up, we, this is what quarterback and we knew, like from park ball Absolutely. to elementary, middle school, high school. We knew mobile quarterbacks, yeah. but once they get in college, they they change the Athletes. dynamic. Now it's like, oh man, this boring. I hate Georgia, Georgia quarterbacks, and mm -hmm. I, I let that be known Beck, every time. Yeah, like Beck. Beck for one, he's a <laughs> he's a punter. Come on, man. No, nah, Reg, I'm telling you, he gonna be a punter when he get in the league. He's gonna be a damn punter. But then they would hey. want to switch you and make you like, you know, wide receiver, with DB type of stuff. Imagine you get behind five-star linemen. Absolutely. Just think about what you could have. You know what I'm saying? Look at Bryce Young. He's, if this, what? if it's 2007, 2008, Bryce Young never get that opportunity. That's Absolutely. Real. That's real. Absolutely. That's half of the league now. Right. Lamar Jackson, uh, Jalen Hurts, even uh, players like Jason Allen. I mean, he's a little taller than, than most, but he's mobile. He's mm -hmm. moving around. He's not looking to sit back and, and, and sit in the fight. He's yeah. making plays. What you think about the uh, Neil deals, college uh, players again? NIL. NIL. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody put it perfectly. Hey, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never Neil. heard it said. Hey, I, 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 I swear to God, I was lost. I don't know what that is. And many times, <laughs> I asked a nigga for stats. Or ask the nigga to fact check some shit. You never could do that. I think about a nigga. I think about Colin Kaepernick <laughs> yeah, and everything. Like, I'm like, hold on. We ain't finna go there politics and shit. <laughs> Where you come now? You want to embarrass me? What like, you I'm just saying, bro. I guess it's a beard thing, man. NIL, <laughs> what you think about NIL, D? NIL, uh, he said somebody... he thought I was talking about Colin Kaepernick. Oh, <laughs> uh, I swear to you, said Neil. I was lost for a minute, but uh. Uh, somebody put it perfectly. They said it's reparations for all the athletes that did not get paid before. Mm. Um, man, I, I man, I, I hate thinking about it because mm. I know I'd be so good right now when it came when it came to that. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, guys getting deals from Benz, and we in the, we man, I mean, we in downtown, right? The amount of opportunities for a starting quarterback of Georgia Tech are endless, especially when he's a likable mm -hmm. guy and he's winning. From the crib. Come on now, man. I, yeah. I don't like to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm saying, that was marketable. Hey, that's real, bro. That's real. <laughs> that shit was marketable. People don't know. Like, I wore a visor my junior yeah. and, and senior mm -hmm. year. Yeah. My that face is on Oakley Box. Right, That's so if I show you the next, I seen your picture. My face is on Oakley. My yeah, helmet. Yeah, send that so we'll go show the episode. It's on. It's on Oakley's box. That mirror tent that a lot of people are wearing. Fire. That me, me, Calvin, Joyner White, and Tashard Choice were the first ones to break that out. Everybody else was just doing regular clear, but we got the little slight clear with the mirror tent. So you know we got to swag it out a little That's bit. Fire. Yeah, they put my helmet and my face on on uh, on that box. So nothing, 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 man, nothing in my pocket for it. Man, come on, man. I don't, I don't, I don't like talking about it because it brings up old, old feelings. Uh, and born, man, frustrated. born in the wrong era, man. For real, It'll be like that. <laughs> for real, you walk so some niggas could run. Exactly. There you go. Right <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shit, that's tough right now, man. That's crazy. It's all it's, right. So look, we every, we be asking people because it's like you know it's been trending on uh, social media. You taking money or the rings? You being a competitive athlete. Somebody made up a valid point. Mm -hmm. um, the city is 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 a major factor, but me as an athlete, bro, I, give me the rings. 
Give me the rings, man. Because that's why you, that's why you play. Right. That's why you play. You you that's uh, your legacy. That's 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 why you do it. You uh-huh. do it to be a, uh, be a champion to to win championships year after year to build some type of dynasty, if you will, for whatever program or organization you with. People don't understand that money comes along with the rings. Yeah. <laughs> you get they, the extra they leave trick. that off. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you getting the extra trick every round. First round, that's another check. Second round, that's another check. Super Bowl, that's another check. I mean, yeah. so you getting paid. But uh, yeah, them rings, man, that, that's something you can hold on to. Like forever. to go a whole career without, without you know, like knowing the feeling of winning that championship and you don't won in high school, Absolutely. you don't maybe won in college, you don't won since you've been playing. Mm-hmm. You want to feel that, like, you know, want to be a champion. So some people, I think people say they'll take the money just for fun. Like some niggas, like, they weren't going to give you 50 million anyway, nigga. Did you take the money? <laughs> Who? You said, you no, I said I want the rings. Didn't I say I always said I want the rings? Rings. Yeah. I forgot, my bad. Because like on some competitive type shit. Yeah. Like, because I be telling, um, this how I feel. Certain stuff like money with money. Like, bro, I could have went to school, got my master's degree if it was about money. Because mm-hmm. you're not guaranteed. If you play sports... If you operating camera in, in guarantee, like you produce or anything, it's not guaranteed you're going to excel and make the mo- money in your field. Right. So if you want to be on a safe bet, nigga, go get a degree and get you an electricity job, nigga, where they going to need you. Get an HVAC job if you want money. That's right. Yeah, nigga, sure. shit. Nigga, you want a ring? Get a ring. <laughs> that's, yeah, why you, that's why you do it. That's why you suit up, bro. That's, that's the part. That's why you... Work out. That's why you go to practice. That's why you didn't entertain this group of people. Didn't entertain them girls. You you do that shit to to win. You know what I mean. So if you ain't like, for that, I don't know why. Make it pay out. For who real? was some quarterbacks or not even just quarterbacks? Who were some players that you looked up to when you was when you was growing up in? Oh, uh, Brett Favre was my guy. Of course, Vic. You like Green Bay a lot then? I did. Well, you know, uh, the Falcons blacked out a lot. So we saw San Fran, Green Bay, and Dallas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I told y'all niggas so, that before. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Dallas, I didn't necessarily like Troy Aikman, though. I, I like Steve Smith. Oh, no, not Steve Smith, but Steve Young. Steve okay. Young was dope. San Francisco, yeah. Um, yeah, he was mobile a little bit. Lefty. Who else? Vic, Favre, Randall Cunningham, because he was one of the coolest people I ever met in person. Oh, uh, man, tell her. We got to, what, what happened? Um... Uh, Herschel Walker was family at one point, ironically enough. <laughs> so after the Falcons game, and that was one game, I think Herschel broke off a, ni- a 93-yard run or whatever. So uh-huh. they won and everything. That's back when he was playing with Philly. So this back in the day. Right, back right, when the gotcha. old green jerseys. Uh-huh. Right? But I got a chance to meet him, and he literally dapped me up. What's up, young brother? You know what I mean? Real cool, real slick. That's how them smooth niggas talk back <laughs> I'm telling day. you. That you young know what I mean? <laughs> Tall, top, one of the tallest people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. But, Real cool, man. So, um, Randall Cunningham, definitely on the list for that. But you go off to remember that. People don't be knowing how that could take somebody far. Like, what if he would have been an asshole? Boy, ain't there something out there? Man. There's something out there. It be the ones that you think going to be cool and down to earth. Like, nigga, you ain't even like that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like, nigga, I just like sports. That's the only reason I know you, nigga. Nigga don't know you. Hey, and speaking of that, ironically, Dennis Rodman is one of the nicest people you ever run into. Nigga, what what you was doing with Dennis Rodman? No, I was not with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's be clear. I was not with him. Uh, what they call it? Uh, Sawgrass Outlet in Florida. It's, it's it's a big outlet right 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 outside of Miami. Mm-hmm. I'm in the middle of Sawgrass, and running to Dennis Rodman. Took a picture, dapped it up, got to ask a couple questions. Real cool. Jet cool. Like Real cool. No Real cool. Right. And he, he was sober. Freak. Yeah. <laughs> that I don't know. yeah, you called him in the daytime. <laughs> that Catch yeah. that nigga by 8.30. Like, it was daylight, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Daylight. You called him You called him right before he hit the liquor store. <laughs> nah, then that's... A, he, they, I ain't really heard too many bad stories about yeah, Dennis. You hung with Dennis. No, no. no Freako. Oh, Freako. That's yeah, Frico, who had yeah. told us. Freako. He definitely fits in with Freako. <laughs> yeah. You can see that happen. Definitely. Man, the Definitely. Braves lost to the Phillies. What you think about it? Hurt my heart, boy. I mean, I, I'm a diehard Braves fan. So, um, Nobody was, saw that coming, though. I did. I mean, people saw it coming. Phillies hot as hell right now, bro. But damn, like yeah. how they did it? Yeah. That momentum is everything once you hit that playoffs. That's Man. that's for any sport. And they yeah. just caught, caught hot like at the right time. 
Um, me and my brothers got to enjoy game one together. You know what I mean? We we yeah. haven't gone to a Braves game in years. So that was the highlight of that series of this playoff run for us. But uh, nah, man, they just hot. You got to, again, tippy cap. I hate to do it, but they just hot right now. Yeah, they just hot right now. Hey, can you, uh, speaking of your brothers, can you just talk about, like, you know, your family legacy and, like, yeah. you know, football hey, and Stevenson? And a lot of niggas don't talk about Marcus Ball enough. Yeah. yeah. Now, Red, I know a lot of people know you. Marcus Ball was my favorite, bro. <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> no, go. That, that came go, wrong. Go. That came wrong. 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 And that's but my I'm, brother, bro. Yeah, I, 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 said, I said it. I said it excited. But I'm saying, no. Nah, Marcus Ball was a dog. Like, we, yeah, you ever seen him play? But see, I went to middle school, Marcus. Oh yeah, that well, was, you know then. He my my brother. He was the, he's he's rough. Yeah, he, that, he's that was, he's, a, he's a people champ. He so. uh, when Dreads wasn't necessarily popular, mm-hmm. he had Dreads. He played every position on the field. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was a likable, lovable dude. You know what I mean? He was loud. Um, he used to be out. Um, I never stepped foot in prime time. My brother used to love prime. Time. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Great yeah. club. Uh, uh, off Kellen Road, them clubs off, off like but you, that. He but you know what it did, though? Real. You, a real, you was like a real quarterback-minded person, too, though. Like, oh, I used to tell them their ass all the time. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dead ass. Before the first game I seen, yeah, they out at my partner house with some girls and, you know, shit, you know, doing their thing. Yeah. I got on phone my dad. I was like, hey, man, get these niggas right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm snitching. <laughs> Five minutes later, they right at the house. Yeah, they, they, it's, it's, oh man, you quarterback, Adam, man, nah, bro, come on, man, let's win this game. Yeah, we got a game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is night before the game. We ain't win. Yeah, that's why. But that's that was him, man. My brothers, all of them like that outside of me. All of them played DB outside of me. Uh, Rayshon played DB, went to Central Michigan, uh, UT Chat. Y'all know Marcus, Florida State, and uh-huh. Memphis. Regis went to Memphis, and uh, uh, Marcel, uh, Marcelino. Nickname Mister. He actually went to Indiana. Um, just got cut from the 49ers, but he got picked up by the Giants. So it's 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 five of us out there running around. G-Man. Crazy. I ain't know I ain't know what that meant. Don't just put money. <laughs> yeah, we got a little sister out there too, but she not getting on no football. Yeah, field. pops ain't playing pops. Word. Yeah, what was that oh, like wow. though? Like you know, what was your dad like? Like that structure in the house? Like was y'all training every morning? Like was y'all... he daddy well, I mean, ball type? He wasn't in the house. You know what I mean? It was just my mom and my three brothers. You know, you know how dads do sometimes. Some, you know, they get the hell on. Um, but he was always there. Uh-huh. My strength and conditioning coach was my dad. The get back coach was my dad. So even though he went in the house, he was there. Right. You know what I mean? And it literally kicked in around my eighth grade year to when my dad started pouring in everything he had into not only us, but our program. I can give you a list of NFL um, track runners, um, WNBA players. And I'm talking about Olympians when I'm talking about track runners um, that know my dad, that have grown uh, under the tutelage of my dad uh-huh. with the strength, conditioning, and that mentorship. So, uh, now nah, my dad came in at the right time, put his put a stamp on us and everybody else, and he's still doing that shit to this day. Yeah, shout out to uh, Effect oh, Fitness. Oh, For sure. Whoo, scary. What? No. I remember, like, because I went to, I went to Stevenson Middle. So mm. we used to, I played on the football team. We had to go up in the morning, live with the high schoolers yep. and seeing Coach Ball and everybody like, that shit was intense as a middle schooler and then walk back and start school. Like, that shit was crazy, bro. <laughs> it's, it was a a lot of, it's, it's a lot of what, what these athletes are missing right now is that element. That mm-hmm. element of somebody just literally holding you accountable. My yeah. dad would call your mama house at six o'clock in the morning and say, bitch, where you at? Put them on the phone. Why you not in the weight room? Uh, that's just the element I don't see anymore. Right. Well, it's very rare to find right now. But right now, I think I, I blame social media. Like you know, they ready to put up like their little highlights and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, but it's all like marketing. But they not building no character with this. You know, with certain shit, it's like certain players. Well, like you, something you can't teach. Absolutely, yeah. the intent. And you need sure. like an OG like that. Sometimes just even telling you, hey, like. You dead ass wrong. You missed the block, like type shit. These kids, now nah, they don't want to hear that shit. No. Nah. They walking off from the coach. <laughs> Nigga, I, I be up going out there to the youth football. Nigga, the coaches can't coach because the damn daddies, as soon as they make a, he at the gate. Nigga, let yeah. him talk to that coach. You want shit. <laughs> hey, it, that's hard to do though, bro. <laughs> 
My son, Roman, his first year of baseball. That's very hard to do, bro. Every time he make a mistake, you there. I'm on the fence. <laughs> he on the fence. He on the it's field. hard to do, man. Like it's it's hard. Like I literally. So what I know now. But you're an athlete. You could tell yourself. I know that, man. But you don't want to step on that coach's Good toe. Coach, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, that was a struggle for me. I'm not lying. Can you, to you. do you do you look at yourself as being able to coach? I know I can coach. I was coaching at the high for yes, a little bit. Yes, you know yes. what I mean? But again, it's I, my passion far exceeds any athlete's passion that I've come in contact with right now. Mm. Oh. Again, that element, the intangibles that we grew up with, that we used to, it ain't necessarily there all the time. Gotcha. It's not commonplace. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, that's, that's, that's hard for a dad that knows what's going on or has some type of idea of what's going on. That's hard to sit back. It really is. Nigga, I, know I, know, some, I know some dads who don't know shit. And see, that, yeah, that's, that, that's a different story. That, that's and, a different story. No, nigga, I got a... He wasn't gonna get mad. I got a partner. <laughs> Bro, he never played like football players like ninth, tenth grade, but he always telling his son how to play D. You never played DB, bro. Let him talk to his coach. So he's just, he's just like, Bro, it just be like, man, let him talk to the coach. That, that goes in that social media. Because he gets to the point where the coach be like, just go over there and talk to your dad then. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't coach you. Yeah, or I ain't going to play you. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You just yeah. not That's what play. happens. Yeah, it's your That's daddy what fault. Go ahead, sit down, man. Yeah. Let your daddy coach you up at the house. Yeah. yeah. Or y'all going to start a team. Yeah, y'all know everything. For real. Uh, So y'all, when how was Effect Fitness come about and how was it started? Effect Fitness. Uh, and if you out. don't know about Effect Fitness, that's, man, the brick. That's all you got to <laughs> say. Shout out to my partner, Dooley, man. Dooley. Dooley and I got together in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, we were both actually individually training, and I was on the east side of things. I was still coaching, training on the east side, uh, coaching at Stevenson. Dooley was working out uh, of his garage and using the Civic Center parking lot. People don't even know what the oh, Civic wow. Center parking lot is because mm -hmm. they don't know the Civic Center. But mm -hmm. we ended up working together down at Tyler Perry Studios. Um, I was working out. Off a uh, torn ACL, but we got together in 2013. He said, "Bob, just come by the uh, come by the garage, see what I'm doing in here." Ever since then, we've been together. If you see anybody doing anything on top of a brick, they got it from that boy right there, Dooley. He created that. There was not no no step, no two step, no workout, no nothing was done before we started or he started doing that oh, on top brick. of that brick. So we started in that 400 square foot garage. Um, off of Piedmont, eventually moved across the street off of Baltimore Row, kept growing, kept growing, um, moved to Metro One, which is right behind Jim Rock, mm -hmm. and that literally was a tin can. No insulation, no nothing. So if it was 30 degrees outside, it was 25 on the inside. I don't know how that worked, but it did. <laughs> um, but eventually we moved to our location now to where we, uh, we've been there for the last six years, and we lucky to still have some momentum going. So, um, man, 2013 when we started. Shout out to that. Man. That's just a testament. That's just a testament. So when you know what I'm saying you you make it um, you make it to the league. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it, what was it like for you to transition out of like you know not being in the league and like finding your next calling or, or your next. Uh, you know what I mean motivation to move because all at the time you done trained for football since you was. That's all you wanted to do. Man, I'm going to be honest with y'all. It was hell. Mm -hmm. I call myself an artist. I call myself a journalist. I call myself a photographer. I call myself a businessman, everything other than football, because I was scarred by football. Mm -hmm. I thought it, like, I thought the game owed me more. Right, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Told my quad in both. I was with Detroit for three years. First year, I toured this quad. Second year, I toured this quad. The third year, I tore my ACL. And then after that, it was like, all right, all right. Like, just reality sets in. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Even though you still got that passion, you want to be out there, and you see the mediocre shit that slides by, you're like, I know I'm better than this guy. But again, transitioning, it's rough for most. Yeah. Damn near nine out of ten. And that's not just for football. That goes with basketball. That goes with baseball and any other sport. Even track athletes go through it as far as like the transitioning of phase. But it was it was hard. If I didn't have my dad around me, if I didn't have my mom, my brothers, like a, so my people around me, if I didn't have them around me, even though I still struggle, 
bro, I, I, I don't know where I'd be right now. Because I did, I tried to do everything but deal with athletes. I tried to do everything but deal with the gym. But um, I was reading this book, and I keep reading this book to this day called The Compound Effect. The Compound Effect. Compound Effect. Uh, last name Hardy. I can still forget his first name. Still read this book, but it said literally, you're born with everything that you need to be a millionaire and to live your life in abundance. When you come into this world, you have that. So I looked in the mirror one day. I was like, man, what the hell should I be doing? I said, man, my dad's supposed to be a millionaire right now training all these motherfucking pros, training all the... And, and my dad's is known around the damn world almost. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. We got the same damn name. All right, let me stop bullshitting, get on my stuff. And ever since I had that conversation with myself, like, bro, this is you. This is your name. Mm -hmm. Like, this is so simple. Just follow him. Ever since then, it's been up. Been up. For real. That's what's up. That's a lot of niggas don't read. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, it's... Just read one book. Yeah, just, read, I swear bro. to God, just I read you one say book, you've dog. Been reading all your life, no, you say you read one book. <laughs> I keep reading it. I, of course, I, 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 don't, I dive in the book. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that book, like, just master one thing, bro. You ain't got to. I see people with these libraries and shelves of book in their damn house, and I'm like, bro, I know you ain't read every goddamn book I in this know. house. I'm I'm one of those people. That's cool. How many books it looks good. It, it's for looks. It's for it, decor. It, okay, cool. Oh, okay. It looks good. Decor. But in my mind, I'm like. Nigga, why you front? <laughs> like, read one. <laughs> See, I think I'd just be too real. You know, it's not, I got three books and I don't even have them together. Like, it's one in my trunk, it's one in like the closet. <laughs> like, it's in like, the I, trunk. Yeah. Hey. Like, like, I got that motherfucker. It's the, uh, it's the yellow book, like, fuck feelings or some shit. Uh, Y'all ever seen, you seen that one? Yeah, so it's like, they were like, this is a good read. If you tell, like, how Ball just said the compound effect. Mm -hmm. I might get that book. Am I gonna read it? I don't know. But I'm not gonna have it looking like I don't read them. Like there's <laughs> niggas who have this shit on they on they bookshelf. Like I'm not buying no bookshelf. I'm not doing that type of shit. Decor, I get that. I do Decor, get it because it does look nice, especially like if you're on a Zoom call or some shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Thanks. You know how the ESPN journalists do it. You know what I mean? That looks good, but bro, I know you ain't reading all them books for real. I like audio books, man. I love them. I love them. I, I bought it on audio book too. Oh, see, yeah, I swear no. to God, I now you to talk, man. I could goddamn, I could tell you about that motherfucker in about a month. <laughs> I could tell. I'm telling you that how that junk be for real, man. Reggie, like just to know that you was at Georgia Tech, cause um, I, I actually was a Georgia Tech fan a couple years mm -hmm. uh, at different times though. Uh, I went to school with Morgan Burnett. Growing up, and he yeah. went to Georgia. Oh, Tech. that's what's Georgia up. Tech. Yeah, yeah. So when he went to Georgia Tech, I'm locked in. Uh, Corey Griffin. Yeah, yeah, that was my cousin. That's he, hard. Yeah, he went to Georgia Tech. So it's like it, be, and that's how I know that Georgia Tech versus Georgia rivalry be so real. Cause my cousin, he'll send me picks. Mm -hmm. If he have to pick Georgia, that shit he won't send it. <laughs> <laughs> like he won't send it. <laughs> No, that's real, bro. <laughs> he won't real. send that shit. But if he betting against him, he said it. it might be South Carolina plus 49. That nigga might put a star there. <laughs> but Georgia, man, no. Man, one game I knew, I was like, he just hate Georgia. That nigga bought up six points. Like, he bought up six points for the other team. I was like, bro, if you doing all that, you true. just go Georgia. You tripping, bro. bro. You Georgia tripping. gonna win that shit. Going but nah, back. that should be real. Man, Morgan Burnett was like a little brother to me. Yeah, number, yeah, because he had number one on. Yeah, MB, Uno. Man, he went to called. North Clay. Uh, Green Bay. Uh -huh. yeah, Green Bay Packers. Yeah, forty two. Beautiful family right now. That yeah. what's up? Yeah, That's my dog. Man, he so Morgan. He was playing with Green Bay, and at the time on the team, uh, Eddie Lacy was on there. Mm -hmm. So uh, they in the locker room watching my videos and stuff. Mm. So um, Eddie Lacy was like, uh, he hit me in the DM. He was like. Yo, you went to school with Morgan? I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, he just told me. He was like, we in the uh, locker room watching your videos and That's stuff. He crazy. was like, uh, he was like, I went to school. And he was like, Morgan told him, he was like, man, he been funny since we been in like elementary. He told him that. So that. I'm like, bro, I'm telling my homeboy, I'm like, bro, Eddie Lacy fucking. You know, this at the <laughs> yeah. time, Eddie Lacy. He's, he's right. up there. Boy, boy, he on the climb. Yeah, he just great. got to the league if he's up there. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to Eddie Lacy in Atlanta. He hit me up. He was like, "Yo, you in the city?" So I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Man, you and Marco, uh, y'all come out and uh, 
come out and hang with me, uh, some club. He was like, uh, woo woo. So I'm like, bet we pull up on him. He had somebody in the club, like he wasn't spending money. He'll tell them and they'll buy the bottle. Absolutely. So he asked me what we drank. So cool. The bottles come. So I'm like, bro. I said, nigga, we good. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, Eddie Lacy rocking with us. Nigga, that was his last good day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I told you, hey, he just no, 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 no. This, <laughs> is, this was his second year. Yes. Because the first one, because this, I think this before blue checks. Mm. Because I think When he it meant had, something. Yeah, yeah, when he had liked something, I was like, nigga, I was just watching you on Sports Center, uh, you know, when they had it about him coming from New Orleans or something. So I'm seeing him liking comments and stuff on the shit like video. So I'm like, nigga, what? So this after his rookie year, this was his second year. Man. I just knew I had my NFL player in the back. <laughs> we hung out good, though. Shout out to LA. So I'm trying to get him on the show. He Damn, was, he was out for that story. Yeah, he, was, he was at Spellhouse like a few years back, too, getting lit, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, the nigga, yeah. he, he, he a good. Up. He a hang now. <laughs> he a hang. He's still in shape, man. Yeah, yeah. Good. I'm still playing, you know, basketball, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. You know, we hoop. Eddie. Oh, Eddie, I don't know. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> nigga. You hey. like. Hey, hey, hey. I was like, he the first I one on the court. He he's stretching myself, the shit. I know he's, you stretching this shit, ain't you? Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good. That's good. But I, I, can already, I know where he at. Bro, something shit. going on with Marcel. 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 Yeah, I don't hilarious. know what it is, but Marcel, he going through something. I don't know what it is, bro. He <laughs> said, so, yeah, I'm out there two, yeah, three days a week. Two, right? three days, I'm strong. I'm in the gym, you know what I'm saying? That's all right. <laughs> no, nah, I don't went and worked out with Reggie. Uh, I was doing, man, Reggie, like, people don't... And I could test this. Like, anybody who has trained with Reggie, they'll know, like, Reggie a good motivator, bro, on some shit. Like, that's why I know, like, when you, I was asking about the coaching, so you probably see if people's heart ain't in it. Like, you know what I'm saying? They don't have the same passion as you. Mm -hmm. But Reggie a motivator, nigga, like, to keep, you know what I'm saying, want to get better yeah, and that. stuff like that. So, But you need that type of people because you had that. A lot of people ain't got that. Absolutely. And you know, because, like, I think what it done turned into with you football they putting players on the team. They ain't really developing these kids. They just thinking about winning right then. Like, these kids got to go on to middle school, high school, college. And it's like, soon as they face an obstacle, they going to shut down because they ain't, it's nothing that, you know what I'm saying, being built. Could be coaches, yeah, yeah, the coaches just ready to win right then. And you got to teach them so and often. train them. It's happening so often. So often. But what can you do? I just do my part. And you know, I don't, I, I'm not the rah rah guy. I ain't finna be yelling. Yeah, you and, you I'm, and I'm, Dooley, I'm, two different. I'm, two finna, different, I'm uh, finna tell you something real two quick. <laughs> two different approaches. Like, uh, I remember one time you were training, you was like, you know, you, in the text, you was like, hey man, why we training so hard, Ridge? What we getting ready for? I said, bro, you got to bounce back from that prize pick when y'all go crazy with the 1942. <laughs> yeah, I, I, need, I need you to bounce back that bro, next day, bro. No lie. So, you know, like, you know, as you go weeks, you be like, it should be getting easier. But I'm like, he add more to this shit. <laughs> man, we might get in there like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be honest. I ain't going to lie. Burpees not easy. I hate burpees. <laughs> that should be warm-ups. Like, Nigga, oh, I'm just getting to the point that. where I could do <laughs> one do burpee warm correctly. <laughs> it's a warm-up. I'm just able to do one burpee correctly. <laughs> Nigga, we doing 40 burpees in a warm-up. Nah. We ain't even start training. Four sets of 10. Four oh, sets of 10, that adds seven. up. If I do the first set, I'm like, okay, cool. Nigga, second said it like, all right, man. <laughs> Facts. But you got to go into working out with a mentality. Like, if it's four sets of 10, I know after the first two, I'm good. Like, it's two, Halfway, I got yeah. two more, and then it's a wrap. But, dumb, I'm just telling you part of the warm-up. It's exactly. 10, <laughs> it's 10 burpees, then it's 15 lunges, then it's 10 squats. And like, bro, that shit ain't. You actually catching on. That's, that's <laughs> damn near some of the patterns. Wow, when you get to that fourth yeah. set. Nigga, you just lose count. You just doing it. Yeah, that's how we warm up. We got to get ready. I got to make sure you check in. It got to the point I might make it out the second or third set of the warm up, but then it's time for the real workout. So it's like, hey, just just in where you at. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just wait for that. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'll be at, I'll be at my ain't pace. Lying. <laughs> he ain't lying. <laughs> and Chad telling his ass so quick. Rich. It's all Chad doing. Rich, rich, rich. <laughs> oh, yeah, Chad V.A. Hey. Then, no, but the brick class that they got, man, if you watching this. I didn't manage to into that class. You done went? Yeah. 
My friend Jordan, she does Pilates. Yeah. Get, get, get a mic. So we can know about your experience. Yeah, Jarday, if you're watching, um, I've been bamboozled. She didn't tell me that there are smaller bricks in the back of the class. Uh, it was my first she time set going you with up. her. Yeah. That's she teaches right. Pilates, and I was like, I want to do some more cardio. And she was like, we could take the bricks class. I was like, okay, cool. Not cool. Yeah. yeah. Not Bri- cool. Did you really walk cool. away hurting, though, or did you just have a good workout? I mean, from what I did, I had a good workout. Perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, you feel better after you leave, but I'm everybody looked like they was wearing wet rags. So by the end. it does get a little hot at times. We train. You can see it on the wall. <laughs> what? You can't wall. Bro, we trained with Reggie, and after that, he te- he was teaching the brick class. So Chad not convinced me. He was like, "You might as well knock one more out." So I'm like, "All right, cool." I, like, I guess because I did only, you know, what I'm saying I missed two days this week. Let me knock out, and get a double workout. Mm-hmm. So I go in there, bro. We in there doing it. And I'm just stopping. I'm looking around. I'm like, I'm finna die. <laughs> like, no. bro. He's not lying. The mirror wet. It's like the room closing yeah. in on me. I'm just you standing feel there. The heat, yeah, like, I'm like, bro. Yeah. Literally had... two minutes into the class, I turned to Jardine. I said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and she's like, she's like very sweet. And she's like encouraging. She's yes, like, she is. you're doing so great. I'm like, bitch, I'm dying. Bro. And then this they, they playing, intense. they playing hit music in there. Yeah. So it's like, jamming. nigga, I'm like, yeah, we gonna nigga, jam. I'm finna die to And then they yelling at your ass. Yeah, I'm finna die to Meek Mill. I'm like, nigga. This ain't the way I'm supposed to die. Hold on. Wait, a minute. Wait, how long? How long the sessions be? It's like, it's like forty-five, 45 minutes, minutes yeah. of 45. intense cardio, bro. But from you, the beginning, nigga, yeah. it be so hot in there and so like, like you know how when you first cut your car on in the cold and then like you got to defrost, it's like that. It's like walking all. into a hot car. It yeah. can get like walking. that. Yeah. It, it can bro, get like that. Yes. Listen, nigga, you can't can. even see. It depends on what I room you in. Though. Yeah, I'm, man. I'm, it, I'm it, trying it, to sneak it, and look at people watching <laughs> to see what time it is. Nigga, stop you can't even people see. Stop people away now. Shit. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, so it's a great class. <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. It can get like that. It but this is what's going to make, hey. It's October. Don't go to a haunted house. Take your ass to a brick class. My man. Go to a brick class. My man. Nigga, nah, it's the same shit. effect. And then real go shit. to Jarde on Thursdays for Pilates. Shout Absolutely. Out Shout out to Jarde. Shout out to all the trainers we got over there. But you know what? We, we got a Eric, good team. Uh, sh- man, you know uh, Lola be coming to your class. Like, yeah. Man, she she's so like motivating. She put her glasses on. She go to work. But all y'all trainers, they, y'all got y'all different, you know, um, personalities. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But all y'all, like, you never see y'all, like, down unless y'all go in the car and do that shit. I don't know. It's like, but, bro, y'all always motivate people who come in. Bro, that's our job, whether, bro. Whether they train you job. or not. You a, bro, it ain't even got to be your trainer. You trying to lead? No, no, come to the class. For real. Like, they trying to motivate you yeah. to get better. My, uh, my mom... My mom works out at a fit. My mm. mom shout out to mom dude. My mom, she never really was a workout person, but mm. she might have started a fit going what maybe like six, five, oh, six wow. years ago. Yeah, she there. She work out. Every she didn't day work out before, now. huh? Nah, she not like that. That's nah. crazy. And I know a you just mentioned your mom. Yeah, I know a fit you just mentioned everything. It's some fine women at a fit fit. What a segue. <laughs> nah, <laughs> segue king. Segue king. No, I'm just saying, if <laughs> fellas, don't think. I know you might hear that brick in here. What, you said Pilates, whatever that Pilates. is. I don't know what Pilates. Oh, is. Don't man, scare that speaking away. Speaking on that, man, please get us some more. Y'all keep coming. Come down there. I, we need more guys down there. You speaking on fine women down there. You, he ain't lying. It's, it's more it's, women. It's, than it's men, full of women down there. It's it, and they they they're professional women. They got their thing in order. Everything oh, is cool. Um, but they it's like nine to one when it comes to the ratio. Yeah, my homegirl Cree do the brick class. Fellas, come out. Fellas, please come we out. Go please, please, please come huh? out. We should go as a group. That would be funny. I've been waiting we, on the whole eight to five South yeah, team should. to come out there. I'll go. <laughs> Look at that. Easy. We get y'all trickling in. Yeah, we can find individual out. Individual by individual. I ain't never did the brick class. We do, I don't work we do once class. a week. Like, we could train with Reggie. We could do a group class. Like no, do a little bit. I'm down. I'm Let's down. do a break and a Pilates class. No, we could like if we do if we because after Kill we drop Pilates. this, they yeah. gonna want to. We could go and do a like a brick class as a group. That's whenever y'all ready, bro. I I change up the whole schedule. If y'all say y'all coming in that one class, and we doing light set or something else, fuck that. I clean everything out, man. We bringing them bricks just for y'all. Oh, don't do that. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> she just and again, and look, it ain't got to be bricks, though. You know, we do I everything. Was. I thought I was going to the light class. I yeah, was we, we, it ain't necessarily got to be bricks. Though, we can do everything. Summertime, is, it get real in the summer. True. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, look, you a Falcons fan? I love the Falcons. Lions fans, too? Uh, I root for them because they paid me. Yeah, so. For sure. But it, but it's Falcons. In Detroit. You like Ritter? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, look. I know you now, feel look, like you could go in there. Listen to me. Listen to me. I, I was supporting him because I'm an avid supporter of my team. Mm -hmm. I, I was riding with him up until Sunday. This this past this, Sunday against Washington. Yeah, I wanted to go see Sweat. Sweat is a high school player from from Stevenson. Shout out to uh, Montez. Montez Sweat. Shout you out to him. You went to Mississippi State or something, didn't yeah, you? Mississippi yep. State. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to go see him firsthand, but I just knew we had that game. I knew we were gonna win that game easily, coming off the momentum of the last win. But I was so unimpressed by by the quarterback play, um, literally on both sides, but more so with uh, number four, right? Yeah, right here. Yeah, with four. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like four at all. He was so unimpressive. That was one of the most un, un, unentertaining games I've ever been to as a fan. It was, I was disgusted. And I'm gonna leave it at that because again, I'm still a Falcons fan, but nah, bro. But I, if I you look around, away. they got the weapons. I, I love the running back, bro. I like Kyle Pitts. I like the receivers. Their defense is solid, bro. The quarterback, he just garbage. Hopefully he had a bad game and I'm emotional right now. How many? <laughs> <laughs> like, hopefully, hopefully. We got to start this scent. And you know what? Falcons was a max play mm -hmm. this weekend. Like if, if you in the, the, the gambling sports world, that was like a house bet. Like, Absolutely. Boy, go in on the Falcons. Mm -hmm. Who said that? A couple people. Not me. So you, so you like to watch... Commander's money line. You did? Yeah. Good Man. Pick. I did. Good Bro, pick. I'm going to tell you about Good Marcel already. <laughs> I can show you. Marcel will send you eight losing tickets. <laughs> and on his tickets, all the games that he should have took, he just take the opposite for no reason. That's so crazy. I believe he probably did take the commanders. That sounds like a couple of my partners. Yeah. In then the he'll turn around and take the Giants money line. Absolutely. He'll do stuff like that, too. I would, bro. I don't do he, that. He'll Giants Oh, yeah, you like the Giants. Giants. Yeah, he'll Giants fan. He'll Giants fan. Damn. You about the same. We the same boat then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's one, like, uh, you playing at Georgia Tech, what's one of the most memorable games right now that you could, you, that, like, it come to mind that you think about, like, man, that was a game. Oh, that Orange Bowl game. The last year of the Orange Bowl, we beat Miami. That was ranked number three. Mm, yeah. Ranked number three in the nation. Devin Hester, Sonoris Moss on that team. Yeah, luckily, Those Devin Hester was hurt that week, but hell. <laughs> hey, you can't help Hey, I can't. Love. Hey, we finna go to work. But yeah. uh, that's one. Of course, the catch with Calvin. But that first, I I'm, I was a big fan of Miami, just like everybody else was, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, in the 90s. So going down there and actually playing inside the Orange Bowl and against basically them? shutting that shit down, you know what I mean, with a win against them, with they were ranked number three, that was huge. That was huge for me, my brothers, and everybody who who knew what it was when we were coming up. Because I uh, recently, I had watched the Miami versus Notre Dame, uh, like uh, 30, 30 for 30. 30. Yeah. yeah. And I saw that last year. But you know, when you... When you miss certain type of uh, errors, you don't really know why people root for teams so bad and mm, like yeah. go so hard for teams. But I know if I would have lived through that, I would have been a Miami Hurricane fan first and foremost Absolutely. because it was like it kind of was like that because they no. were the what the convicts versus the uh, what they called Catholics. It? Yeah, so it was like damn. But Miami had those teams. But when I like when I was growing up, they was winning. So I'm never like a bandwagon. So I'm like, no. Nah. Yeah, I like, yeah, was they was winning deal. all the time. I like Florida State. It was a real deal. Both both programs were up there when we were coming up for real. Uh -huh. So Florida State, Miami, even you can throw Florida in there too. Florida was running college football for a long time. So what made you choose ACC over SEC? I knew, <clears throat> well, one, I mean, Tech was a win-win for me. Because you at home. And I love downtown. I love downtown Atlanta. I'm not going to lie to you. I still live downtown. Like, even in high school, Friday after the game, Saturday, we ain't got nothing to do. We going to Buckhead when Buckhead with Buckhead. Buckhead yeah. You feel me? When you could get out the car in the middle of the street, jump in the girl car and yeah. woot the woot and do that. You know yeah. what I mean? Of course, that's no longer here, but 
You nah, jump I love out your downtown. car in Atlanta now, but that shit'll be on yeah, the highway. Rap. It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. But you know, <laughs> everything was real lot back then. The Buckhead, it was like a real party every single weekend. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, and again, playing quarterback was huge. Mm -hmm. And so it, that was the, the final. And we was on TV every week. Yeah, facts. Was you guaranteed a starting spot? No. So you um, went and earned that. After my first, after the first week of uh it got back to me, after the first week of camp. The coaches had a coaches meeting. Chan Gailey said, all right, turn in the depth chart for quarterback. Um, and they turned it out. All the coaches turned it in. Defensive coaches, everybody. Everybody had me a number one. Because mm. Gailey was like, all right, how fast did we move this guy to running back? Damn. Did you go early? Like you or like skip? I spring? did not. No, I did not. There was no such. Well, there was a such thing, but no. Um my curriculum at Stevenson was a regular curriculum. It wasn't that to have you graduate early and then go to school early. No, it's I was I was I was raw, bro. I went in I went in and started my first game damn near four weeks on campus. That's wild. The first game was in BYU. Nigga, imagine that in college, nigga coming from Atlanta. I was living the dream, bro. Nigga, that For is real. the dream. Nigga, mm. as a freshman, not red shirted. Eighteen. Freshman. Mm-hmm. Talk about Before it. you go, uh, talk about uh, like the program because you came from Stevenson, which a lot of people might not know about, but talk about that football program and like, you know, what that did for you. Um, I'm a, Again, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, shout out to Coach Ron Gautreaux. That was our head, co head coach. Yeah, he coached for damn near 30 years, uh, finally retired. Um, great, soft-spoken leader for us. Donald Sellers was another uh, cornerstone of that that program. He was a defensive coordinator. He was like Gartrell's best friend. But, I mean, you'll find every person you ask, they'll go back to the Ball family. I'm going to be straight up and down. We had some guys come before us. Uh, uh, Theron Dudley, Stephen Tooks, Arthur Adams, um, Demario Mentors, a couple guys who, Brandon Cannons, who kind of started setting the trend. But it, it wasn't until my dad actually came over and actually instilled a mentality of, bro, if you don't work, these motherfuckers going to run through you. Because it's a world outside of 285. He used to say that shit all the time. It's a world outside of 285. And he just turned on uh, something in every athlete that came in that program to catapult them to where, whatever the hell they doing now. And you talk about basketball players, again, baseball players, all sports. It transcended. He transcended all sports. But he put that in us, man. And he had some hellified motivational ways to get us ready. Um, one, I got to tell you about, because I know you'll find this entertaining. Playing Centennial, or my second round of the playoffs. We at the school Saturday before the game. And to motivate us, he cuts on Rosewood. Rosewood. That's what, uh, them white, uh... Rosewood. Yeah. <laughs> Rosewood. We beating them 28 nothing at halftime. And we destroyed this team. This is the playoffs. They were supposed to be pretty good. But again, he turned on he turned on that mentality to say, hey man, these people are not gonna give you anything. These people ain't gonna, they do not take this opportunity for granted. And you got to work your ass off. So, I mean, just learning that hardcore military type work work ethic mm -hmm. was everything for us. There should be a documentary on Stevenson High School, bro. We'll talk. All them athletes they produce. You said something then, for real. For real, for real. I went to McNair, so... Uh, Y'all was trash. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> what was that quarterback that went from Memphis? <laughs> the quarterback that went to Memphis. Uh, McNair was trash when I was in high school. Uh, I know you're talking about. He was he was a couple years ahead of me. Yes, though. he was. He was he was a little older than me too, though. Yeah, uh, I can't think of. He it, put y'all on the map for a little bit. Yeah, Mac. Now, uh, you know what they would they would lose uh, when it was time to play them characters and stuff like that. Oh, Carol, yeah, yeah. No, so no. it was like normal type stuff, but it was like when I got I, when I moved from on the south side, going from North Clay. If you was an athlete, you was an athlete. When you when I got the Mac now I'm like, oh these niggas, the niggas <laughs> <laughs> and the athletes. <laughs> these some niggas who just play football. Dead ass. Dead ass. <laughs> these niggas ain't no athletes. Dead ass. 
<laughs> These niggas bought that shit. Absolutely. Damn. Well, no, nah, I think that'd be the thing. But if you have a coach, and like I already was saying, if they inside and, you know, on, on top of the, the program, you care about what, what goes on when these kids leave the school. For real, for sure. that, that That's shaping for them. How, how Pops felt when you go to Georgia Tech? He was at the game turn. Oh, or he just he always knew, or he had. A he was cool. He he always had a lot of uh, um, confidence in in all of us. He still owe me a motorcycle to this day, but you know that's that's another story. Uh, we made a bet if I get a D one scholarship as a quarterback to and get that scholarship to a D one program, he'll buy me a bike. Of course, he's like, man, get your ass out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's some dad shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't, man. I don't, no, don't nobody need to yeah, be on Yeah, nobody need to be riding on motorcycle, especially you're a quarterback. For real. He saved your life. He did. <laughs> saved your life with that. No. Any more questions for Reggie, man? No, we appreciate yeah, you coming sure. through, appreciate though, Reggie. Man. Yeah, really. Pleasure, man. Pleasure, man. Pleasure, man. Appreciate you, bro. No, for real. I, I told them all along, soon as we had, because we always do like a pound for pound, but they were so adamant about Randy Moss, so I was like, I knew I was like, I could just bring because you was throwing passes to Calvin Jones. Man, I you never see in his court his coordination. Like if just just break it down. Just break it down to his coordination, how fast the guy was, how agile he was. I'm not sure if he did the show that the combine or not, because we were there at the same time. But I mean the I've never seen anybody be triple team, double team and triple team on the line of scrimmage at the wide receiver position. That blew my mind. And again, we ain't talking about a JV football game. We ain't talking about a park ball game. NFL. We talking about in the NFL. <laughs> At the highest of the high. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that, I, I but think you that's know, it was game. surprising how Georgia Tech would get receivers, though. Oh, I got him. Oh, that yeah. was the only person I hosted. My my whole oh, tenure there. Nice. I got him. Had him in the house before 12 and everything. I knew what his mama was looking out for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Georgia kept him out too late. Yeah, what other school? Mm -hmm. What other schools he was Georgia. probably entertaining? So it was Georgia, Georgia, Jeez. Georgia Tech. Georgia kept him out too late. Yeah. Damn, I knew what was going on. Yeah, we knew Cal. Cal was playing tight end at Sandy Creek. Mm. They put him out at wide receiver at nine then, but I, I knew what I was doing. That's the only guy I hosted at Georgia Tech. Shout out to Reggie Ball. Come on now. <laughs> Man, I need to be Asian probably. Getting the best receiver <laughs> to ever play the game. For real. To go to through Georgia Tech. Man, Randy Moss wouldn't have went for that. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't leaving West Virginia. For real. Nah, don't. We we be, like, you know, it'd be fun sports debate. No, Randy Moss a dog. But I just, man, Calvin, I just, you just thinking back, looking at them games he used to play, bro. And the fact that he left he still had years of prime level, and I think niggas don't niggas leave off that part. You got time for a story? Yeah. So Hell yeah. I'm done. I'm done with the. Uh, I'm done with football, but I'm still in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still in Detroit, and I'm out and about. I think I'm going to some engagement gathering or something like that. Middle of the street, Calvin Walk across the street. I literally get out the car, we hugging everything in the middle of the street. And this was, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is a year before he calls it quits. He said, Bob, I'm done. He said, man, I am hurt. In the middle of the street, we just out on a random Saturday night. So before everybody else knew. You knew it was coming. Of course, I don't I do not do that talking Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't so, trying to break the news. <laughs> hell no. I don't, I, I'm, the, I'm yeah. the last person to support yeah. anything he, he about what, anybody, He knew what bro. telling you in confidence. He was like, so, I ain't got to worry about ball. But I, I, knew, I knew ahead of time that he was uh, about to call it quits. But again, bro, when you got two or three people assigned to you every game, all game, let me tell you something. They not just playing fair. Oh, yeah. So when you running down the field and he ain't looking, he getting knocked the shit out. You know what I mean? He and didn't. Stafford, Stafford don't care. He'll throw that motherfucker. He got it <laughs> hanging in the air like that. Shit, I don't blame my dear too. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was younger then. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> and it was more so one on one back then. Ain't yeah. nobody know. But nah, man. I, I mean, the the guy's just shit. One of the greatest for real, hands right. down. So you right. really, so you would just like throw it in the area, like once he, because you know he he it would be triple triple team in the end zone and he coming down. That really happened with me. 
I'm, I'm gonna make that clear. So re very rarely did I just say, hey, Calvin, everybody is guarding you. I'm about to throw you the ball anyway. No. If I saw you one-on-one -on -one with one of the greatest players I've ever seen in my life, I'm going to throw it to him uh -huh. if it's one-on-one. -on -one. And people did that. You know what I mean? I remember at certain times of the game, coaches say, hey, Reggie, I don't care who's guarding Calvin. Throw it to him. If it was two, three people on him, I did not. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just a matter of numbers. I, as a quarterback for me, one-on-one, -on -one, I'm taking my receiver. If, it's, if I don't have the numbers, I'm going away from him. But... Stupidly enough, a lot of people lead Calvin one on one, and we taking advantage of it. You going crazy? Absolutely, <laughs> man! Shout out to you though, Reggie, man! Excellent, excellent man, uh, athlete. Well, first and foremost, you're an excellent person, though, man. Well, I appreciate like, you. Yeah, man. no, on some real shit, like just to come through and like tell, like you could just with Calvin Johnson being able to tell you some shit like that, and you not gonna tell nobody. Like nowadays, nobody can't tell oh, nobody nah. shit. You will see them <laughs> niggas on the podcast. I ain't with they you, bro. Going, soon as that nigga Cal would have told somebody, he started a podcast. <laughs> right yeah, it I is. got it, man. Nah, I just dang. talked to Cal the other day. That nigga said he finna quit. Absolutely. <laughs> nah, I can't quit because nigga, you done leaked the shit. So nah, it's just little shit like that. We sh oh, before we get out of here, uh, you uh, I don't know if they had lying on you. Oh, <laughs> you had an unpopular opinion. For yourself, you said Kevin Samuels was a prophet. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And I, I know I'm not alone. And I know I'm not. A, I know I'm not alone in this room. I know I'm not alone in this room. And I'm not here to offend anybody. But again, what that man was trying to do is bring our black black families together. Of course, he had some crazy ass tactics. Of course, he came off harsh. Yes. He dogged some women out. He also dogged some men out. But his goal was to bring the black families together, man. That was his, was his ultimate goal. Again, he started talking to us, which people don't mention. Yeah. He made podcasts and, and seminars for men right. before Again. women started calling in. And I don't mean to single you out. I'm sorry. Before <laughs> women started to call in for advice and everything like that. Yeah. But... uh. He owned something, and you, this is how you know he owned something, because everybody imitating the shit he was doing. Uh -huh. I can't tell you how many guys up starting podcasts trying to give motherfuckers uh, uh, relationship advice. Yeah. And they bro, ain't had two girlfriends in their damn life. Nigga, that be the only thing that get me some niggas like, bro, you ain't the nigga. Bro, you know your lame ass ain't had no girl, bro. <laughs> Chill out. And but, then it be I mean, some again. niggas who be saying shit, oh, I wouldn't do that, and they do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm you would never hear me like, boy, I never trick her. I do that. <laughs> I've done that. I've, I've, I've done that. <laughs> Babe, I've done that. <laughs> For real. No. Man, like, appreciate you. Bro. Appreciate you coming yeah. through, Reggie, man. man. This is dope, man. Thank hey. you. Thank you. We need a picture of that Under Armour box and send us some. Uh, I got you. Send the us Oakley, some. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Some. Uh, the memorabilia. memorabilia. Send us some memorabilia. <laughs> what so you want, bro? Anything you can uh, add to the well, I, I got gonna you. call it a collection. I got you. We we, we had two, just to add. We got two things. <laughs> oh yeah, I see y'all adding up. Yeah, I got you. I'm nah, this ain't. I don't know who signed this shit, man. This Marcel signed that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> well, shit, he's still in shape. We know that. You know what I mean? Hey, man, y'all make sure y'all follow Reggie on all social media platforms, The Ball Effect. Make sure you, if you in Atlanta, if you not and you visiting, check out Effect Fitness, man. Please do. Shout out to Reggie Ball. This has been another great episode of Broken Play. Bye, 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 bye. Man, dope, appreciate bro. it, man. This is dope. That was a dope-ass oh. episode. Hell yeah.